I sponsored this tutorial for 100 USD, so thank you so much to your Lord Adam for making it. Um, if you want to make a 3D tutorial uh, and you want to be sponsored for it, uh, please send me a message in the Discord below. And yeah, if I'm interested, I'll be happy to sponsor you uh, to make that tutorial. All right. So we're going to be exporting Dead by Daylight uh, recolor materials to Blender and Unreal 4. Uh, you need to edit your base material. To know how to export characters with U-Model and such, I have done another video that's the complete process from U-Model to Blender to Unreal. This is an extension to that video, so you need to watch that first to know what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're going to start in Blender. Again, to get this basic material set up, the other video goes over it. I'm just going to show how to do the recolor part. Uh, recolor materials are just those the cheap, like, basic recolors that each original survivor gets. So, we're going to take, and we're actually going to, before doing anything, go into U model. If you exported the character's material folder, or just the whole character folder, which is what I do personally, you'll get under Outfit 01, on all the original survivors like Dwight or Jake or whoever, you'll find these textures like this one, an IDD, and a tent BC. These are imperative to recolor materials. So we need to take those all back into Blender. Probably full screen that. So the IDD needs to be in here. You can see I've already got it set to non color. This is important. And the tent BC. This needs to stay in there default sRGB and uh, alpha straight. So the Blender part of these materials is actually super simple. All you need to do is take a mixed color node, set it to multiply, and put it in between the BC that goes into your ambient occlusion. You then want to copy it, paste it, and you want three of them. You're going to then take the IDD, send it through a separate color node, and in order, you're just going to go R into the first factor, G into the second one, and B into the third one. And now, that's basically it. Oh, uh, actually there's a mistake right here. You don't want your BC going into that, you want your tent BC to go into it. The difference is, your normal BC is just the color texture, you know. The basic one. The tint BC is effectively just a desaturated version of it. That's just black and white. It's used for applying the recolor to it. So once we have these set up, you can now see if I go into B, I can just make it red, and the shirt turns red. That's because over here on the IDD texture, the red channel is everywhere where the shirt is. So we can go on to the second one, make it green. That's the green channel. That's on his tie. For Dwight, the tie is black on the tent BC, so it doesn't get the color applied to it correctly. That's just a behavior thing. Uh, and then the third one is blue, and you can just make it whatever color you want. Alright, so that's how the material works. There's actually one more thing. Uh, take one more of these multiply nodes, set it from multiply to screen, and put it after here. Then you want to take your normal BC texture as the B input, and then the alpha channel of the IDD texture into factor. Oh, that's the wrong one. Put it into this one. Basically all that does is stops certain parts of the texture from having the color applied to them. So behavior doesn't want Dwight's notepad and pens to get recolored, so they use the alpha channel to mask out those sections, stuff like his watch. So if I was to undo that part, you can see the watch will change slightly. Not a lot, but it's something. All right, that's just basically making the material though. If you wanna actually take the ones from the game, then you need to go to your character's folder, materials, and then outfit 01. You'll see there's, you know, the normal materials and then CV materials. These are the basic recolors. So I'm just going to pick number two. I'm going to go into it and edit with Notepad. We can scroll through here and you'll see R channel tint, G channel tint, and B. And then also alpha. Alpha is generally unused because, as I mentioned, it just loads the original BC. 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to put this on the other screen. But we're just going to copy those values. So under our channel tint is R equals and then a number. So I'm just going to go to the B value, go to RGB, and paste that number there. And then do the same with the G and then B. And there we go. You would just do the same exact thing for G tint and B tint for the other channels, and it'll copy the way it looks in-game. It might not be one-to-one, -one. it's as close as I've got it to look, and, you know, if you're not happy with the color, you can always just go in here and just move it around until it looks what you want. Alright, so that's all for the Blender part of this guide. If you don't care about rendering in Unreal 4, you can stop here, and you've got all the information you need. So I'm going to close Blender, but we're going to go into Unreal 4. If you follow the other guide up to this point, you'll recognize the setup, the DVD base material we made previously. But now we need to modify it to actually accept the recolor materials. So, I mentioned the Blender part is easy, it's simple. That's because of how well the mixed color node works in that. The, we need to multiply, but in Unreal 4, multiply is only two values. There's no factor. Now, if you've used Unreal 4, you'll know about Linear Interpolate, which is similar, but it gives the wrong effect. Instead of applying uh, the B input over A based on a factor of alpha, it instead replaces it. So it works like the screen node did. So we can't use that one in this instance. But I do have a material setup that works here. So first we need to make the texture sample uh, parameter 2Ds, and I'm going to call this one tint underscore BC, just like the normal BC texture. Place it in there, and then we want another one for the IDD texture, which I'm just going to call IDD underscore mask. All right, put that over here. You also notice that with Unreal 4, we don't need to separate color node because the texture samples are just like that, which is helpful. But now we need three vector parameters, and I'm just going to call it R channel, I'm sure tint, and then make another one, but I'm going to call it green, or G, and then once again for blue. Alright, now from there, we do actually want to make a multiply node. Three of them, in fact. Just gonna put those in there. So, we're gonna take the R channel into A, and you know, just take the color output of each of those and do them like that. Go into each of these nodes and set the B constant to 4. Just on each of these multiply nodes. Now, we actually wanna take more multiply nodes. I mentioned this is going to get a bit more complex than the Blender one. Here it is. And we want to take the output of this multiply into B onto each of them, like so. Now, we want to take the red output into our channel chance A on its second multiply, and then again with green and then blue. Once you have all three of all those set up, you're getting close to done already, thankfully. <laughs> Then we want to take a blend underscore overlay. And once again, we want three of them. Now you might notice the first one says base V3 and the others are just base and blend. I don't think it's doing anything different, so I would just ignore it. But anyway, you want to take the output of the multiple node into blend on all three of them just like that. And then you want the base to be the tent BC output. Just like so on each of them. Now we do actually want to take a linear interpolate node. And we want the output of the first one into A. And then the second one into B. We then want to duplicate the linear interpolate, its output into A. And then the other blend into B. And then we're going to take one more linear interpolate take the alpha channel of the IDD mask into alpha, 
the output of this last linear interpolate into A, and then the regular BC into B, and then plug that into base color. It'll refresh. We're going to apply that change. I'm going to go ahead and make a folder here called uh, Dwight Textures. There, go into there. We're going to go back into the model export, and we're going to grab Dwight's shirt texture. So his BC, normal, arm, tint, and IDD. Throw these in here. Uh, now we're going to select the IDD and the arm, and we're going to right click one, asset actions, and bulk edit via property matrix. This lets you change settings on all of the textures selected at once instantly. Just going to go to texture, sRGB, and turn that off. All of your ORM textures and IDD textures should be done this way. It just makes them look better. It's like setting non-color in Blender. That's the same thing. Another way of doing that, if you want to change one texture, is just double click it. And texture, sRGB. Alright, we can close that. And we're going to go to right click, materials and textures, material instance, and I'm going to call it mi underscore Dwight recolor. Open it up, set its parent to DVD base, and enable the BC, N, ORM, IDD, and tint. And I'm just going to type in DF torso. Oh, is it not torso? I guess it is. And just assign the textures as you would normally. And then you get your IDD mask. And then your tent BC. So, by default, you're going to see they're just solid black. That's just because we haven't set the values here yet. So, once again, you just go into red, make sure alpha is set to 1, and you can make it whatever color you want. Make his tie blue, and we'll make the stripes a pink color. And there you are. Recolor materials as they're intended. Uh, I did actually mess up here. You can see this error, this warning about the IDD as color. We need to go on in here, and the default. I'm just going to set the default to Dwight. Basically, you just need a texture to put here that's set to... It has sRGB disabled, and then set your sampler type to linear color, and we'll apply that. And you can see the error is gone now. But that's the, that's all of it. Once again, as mentioned previously, just go into Notepad, red channel tint R equals G B, and then alpha. Alpha is the A is will always be.